Well, we were talking about Bob Diaco and his tenure here. And I think Bob Diaco's tenure is a little bit um, – doesn't get enough, I guess, credit for the downfall of Mike Riley, um, considering that normally when a defensive coordinator, I mean, Banker, was there previously, when you make a big jump, a significant jump, and in big games mm -hmm. now, in big games they played pretty decent, that you uh, end up, you know, forcing the head coach to fire him. The one thing I wanted to ask you about Bob Diaco, and then I'll tell my story, and then I wanted <laughs> to ask you some so, some other stuff, because I wanted to ask you about the culture in which I think your perspective is good because it's coming from a different place than me because guys like you had influence. But what I wanted to ask you about Bob Diaco, Diaco is I'm a big uh, proponent of even if you're if you're a good enough coach, even if you run a three four four three 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 five, but you know you don't have the personnel mm -hmm. that you would try to adapt. Yeah. Talk about Bob Diaco's inability to try to adapt, considering that we didn't have one guy that could play the three four, not one, not one. Talk about how hard that was, not only to watch but on the players. Because that's not fair to them. No, it's not. It, 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 they because they can't do it. No. Um. So talk because freedom could never be a no. stand up linebacker. No. So he went from a two sixty defensive end, tried to make a two forty five. Then he like, all right, now we're going to put you almost try to get you to play a five technique. Mm -hmm. Just talk about some of the the uh, anxiety and some of the I want to say anger, but some of the disappointment for the players that had to go through that. Well, I, I think. That was Riley's third year. Right. Right. Going into his third year. Yeah. First year was tough. It was real tough. On Coach Riley yeah. himself. Yeah. With the players. Second year, I think he had the players where he wanted them. Yeah. Believing in him. Yep. But then when he was like, so you say, I don't know if he was forced to make that right. change, but that change really was the downfall of Coach Riley. Yeah. It put the, I always say that put the, the stopwatch. It went from regular motion to warp speed. Yes. So um, when your tenure would be over. When, you know, you get a guy that, who's as arrogant, yeah. as cocky, his way is the only way. Um, so there was no adapting right. to the players that he had on the roster. Uh, that was just, that was, that was it. Right. I mean, you had players, you know, one thing I've always tried to do was be there for the players. Right. Ultimately it's about the kids. Yeah. The kids in the locker room. Yeah. Cause I wore that uniform. Even if it, I didn't play at the University of Nebraska, right. it's always been about the kids. For sure, me. I've always been trying to be that big brother, big brother, yeah, that that mentor, mentor, right? You know, you may not like what he say, but you yes, come sir. from a good place. Yes, sir. No, sir. Right. And then just play for the brother to your right, right. brother to your left. Yeah. The guys that wore the uniform before you, the guys going to wear it after you. Right. You know, so I try to tell them all the time, but the the guy who who beats them down, right just constantly beat them down and never try to lift them up. Right. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard on the play. You right. know, and I know yeah. that coach McBride will let you have it, but he would also put his arms around. Oh, he'd be the first one there for you. First one yeah. there. So, but for a guy to constantly beat you down, tell you yeah. you're worthless, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that, and never put his arms around you. You know, that, that's, right. that's not a guy you want to play for. Right. So I always say with Bob Diaco, it was, it was uh, you know, anybody could have been a defensive coordinator when you had, uh, when you know, uh, you know, or Stephen uh, to it, Stephen to is a defensive end who mm -hmm. was, you know, he's one of the greatest ever played for Steelers. You had Manti Teo when he was playing, and you had Harrison Smith playing safety, and that's right up the middle. Mm -hmm. And then you had uh, Big Nicks in there too, that was really, really good. So, you and then they had a corners and everywhere. So, the defense was where what I guess brought him to notoriety was really, really stacked. Now, he coached him credit. My Bob Diaco story was. <laughs> Uh, I was down at the, I remember seeing you too. Yeah. Because I I was down at the stadium and I was just going I was actually going down there to try to get a t-shirt from J J Terry. Terry. So I said, man, you know, they're running a three four. I'd played out of my nine years, I'd probably played seven or six of them in the three four. Um so I said, let me just, you know, peek my head upstairs. And you know, I knew Mike Riley just passing and stuff. Um so Bob Diaco calls me into the into his his office and he's got this big old whiteboard. And I started, you know, I introduced my, you know, did all the pleasantries. And I said, hey, man, you know, it's pretty I'm pretty cool. You playing 3-4. I played in 3-4, you know, you know, seven years in the NFL or whatever. He's like, oh, let me tell you about the, my 3-4. And, and he was talking to me as if his 3-4 was something totally different than I ever seen. Same. 
So I'm like, I sat back and okay, cool. So I'm waiting for him to start putting up, you know, you know how you when you draw the center, you put the X through yes. and the, the Y and all that. So I'm trying to think, oh, maybe he's gonna put up like four different, you know, squares, squares. and stuff. Man, this man drew <laughs> took the took took this marker <laughs> and drew a sword, and he's like, My philosophy is we're gonna be like a sword and we're gonna stab him right there. I just literally, Kenny, I grabbed my t-shirt, <laughs> the little bag I had, got up and left. I said, I'm out of here. You said, I seen you and you said, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. Yeah, you wouldn't talk to me. Yeah, I said, I'm he done. Said, I'm going that, home. that dude been on the job two days and I already, I already cashed him in. I mean, we, we talked about it. I mean, you know, when 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 Riley took over, right. you had Tommy Armstrong as quarterback. Right. Riley's philosophy was West Coast offense. You know, you don't have a West Coast quarterback. quarterback. So you have to adapt to what you have. Right. Did he? No. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of coaches – think their way is the way right their scheme their philosophy is the the, the it all end right. all be all so i i think they did a lot of those players a disservice right um again ultimately this game is about the players right and you're, that's the only way you're gonna win that's the only way you're gonna that's win. The, i mean that's the one thing that that a lot of coach that the really good coaches the one of the best quotes i ever heard was obviously from nick saving he said i don't think plays i always think players mm-hmm He's like, those guys are the ones that are going to win and lose me again. He's like, my job is done come Friday. Yes. You know, and then obviously, you know, there's some things that obviously goes on on Saturdays and whatever the games are. But, you know, I think one of the things I wanted to ask you about, which I think is missing down there, and, I'm, and I can't speak for, for, for Coach Rule, is I can talk from my perspective. When I came in, being an outsider, not from Nebraska, mm-hmm. coming here and, and you coming back, the Toby Wrights coming back, uh, the Dante Jones and, and the Troy Dumas is all those guys coming back and the inspiration that you guys gave us because you guys were playing at the next level. But it was also the brotherhood that you got, yes. gave us because so even when we came back and we would say, you know, struggling a little bit or whether we were playing or not, you guys were there to show us the way. I think that's what's really missing because you see it at all these other schools, mm-hmm. whether you look at University of Miami, yes. you look at Alabama, you look at Tennessee. One of my best friends coaches at Georgia, what they do with their alumni, use them as assets versus adversaries. Yes. And you can lose the they can do a lot of your hard work if you just tell them what you need to do. We need to be done need done because once that happens, it actually accentuates the coaching job. Yes. But I think some of the coaches these days want to have so much control over the players, which it's a weird mindset. We want to control, have Control or, or like our thumb on the players, but don't want relationships with them. See, Isn't my, that a weird type of mindset, I, or is I, that just me? No, you hit the nail. Okay. I pride myself on trying to have a relationship with my players. Right. Not only my players at my position, but other all players. Of them. Right? Yeah. The whole the whole team. Right. When I coached, and we we talk about coaching to a player's playing right, capability. Yeah. We always coach Sammy and I always said, you know, let's do stuff for. Let's make sure these kids put them in a situation where they're going to have success. Right. If you don't, you continue to put them in bad situations. They're not they gonna shut be, down. They shut down. Right. So as a coach, you have to try to, in your mind, put kids in. You may be a good press corner. Right. But you're bad at off. Right. Coverage. So we're going to call things to your, to predicate what you can do. Sure. Right. So the, going back to what you said, I think as far as the alumni base, right. like when you came around, yeah. when, when JP came around, um, Toby came around. Right. Former players came around. I made it a point to introduce them to the current. Oh players. yeah, yeah. Because they need to know a Jay Foreman. They right. need to know a Jason Peter. Not just because you know they let you get up in front of the, the team, team and talk, right. but even before you did that, when when former players came yeah. around, yeah. I made it a point not only to the players that's on the roster, but the coaching staff. Sure, you may not know anybody on the, the right. staff. You're right, yeah. Riley staff, Coach Frost staff. You right. know, but. But I made sure I walked you to every coach's yeah. office and introduced you to him. Right. Because that's that that brotherhood that is there. It's, it's got to be there. It's yeah. got to be there. And you say the Miamis and the Tennessees and the Alabamas. I think Nebraska is behind a little bit on right. that. Right. Um, I think they're working towards getting something in place for it. Yeah. Because you put your sweat and blood and tears into that place. I did the same thing. Right. Like you said, when you when I came back for you guys, I mean the Glovers, the Neil Smiths. Right. Was uh, it for you? They came back for yeah. me. Yeah. You know, and you know, so they taught me and I'm and, and I wanted to teach you. Yeah. And I'm while I've been while I was there, I wanted to teach the guys on the roster now. Exactly. I used to quiz them. Who's who's this guy? 
they had no clue. Right. I'm like, well, he played your position. You should know that. You should know that. Right. You know, in order to get to where you want to go, you got to know your history. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's always interesting in, in um, you know, with the last 10 years, stuff like that. I think, you know, from my perspective, I just think that I think the biggest thing any coach can do, whether it's Matt Rule or any coach, you got to make sure your actions are exactly what your words Where's are saying. Not? Because, you know, as much as everybody says these kids are different, they are. They are. Right? But the one thing that they are before anything is they're athletes. So they're able to adapt to the environment that you put them in. Mm -hmm. Now, they will go further along that, you know, journey if they can trust you. And what they do a lot of, and I said it, you know, really, to be honest with you, you know, like when Coach McBride, he said, Kenny, I need you to run through that wall. Kenny, run through that wall. Now, they might ask you why. But they got to make sure what the reason why you tell them why is factual yes. is not only that player. It's the, all the other players in the position group or in the team that's watching. Yes. So that's how you can lose a team real quick and they won't ever trust you based on what they can tell you. Now, also what you have to make sure is that a lot of these players, they you know, defensive guys usually live with defensive guys, at least when I, when I was in college. Mm-hmm. 